Hello traders, so welcome to the weekly auto and setups volume 174. Ilya here and as always really grateful to welcome you on the Trading Fanatic channel. This video is going to be a monthly outlook and setups because we had the monthly candle closure this week. November has closed amazingly. December is in front of us. But pretty much you know we are going to be trading one maximum three weeks of December because around Christmas, like the week of Christmas, the week afterwards and the first week of January are usually not that great. So make sure to also reward yourself with some time off and spend this time off with your family and also planning for 2023 because again, it's going to be huge. This week was amazing. I'm looking forward to be reviewing it. I'm going to show you uh, the two trades I took this week. We had amazing opportunities, not very clean, right? It was rather indecisive up until the, the Powell speech uh, came out. I'm going to comment on this one as well. So make sure to stick around because we're going to have a lot of value in this video. You know, every month I do a giveaway and the winner who is going to win full lifetime access to my program, to my community, to my courses, to the Fanatic Flicks and everything for this month is going to be Mr. Rosh Madhu, who has been with me since the beginning. He's commenting every single on every single video, every single time, even went on and commented on Trustpilot for the free course. So I really appreciate you, Rosh, and I really think you deserve to be part of the Fanatics. So I cannot wait to welcome you inside and start working with you. By the way, I'm working on some amazing updates for you. So you have to be subscribed and turn on the notification in order not to miss what is coming out. You are going to love it. So make sure to do that. And if you already did it, let's not waste much time because we have a lot to cover today. All right, as always, we're going to get started with a Dixie to have an outlook of how all the other currency pairs are developing, because once again, we mainly trade dollar related currencies. Some of you trade JPYs as well, but it's very important to build that bigger bias on the dollar, which is potentially going to dictate what the other pairs are going to do. Before I do that, shout out to my amazing broker sitter, Forex.com. They are great. They have all the assets, all the cryptocurrencies, all the equities, everything that you want to trade with amazing spreads. They have two types of accounts, but I suggest you pick their eco account. You're going to pay a little bit of commission, but every single lot that you accumulate will go towards planting 10 trees. They have saved too many CO2 emissions. They have planted too many trees. Make sure to check them out. Link is in the description. Go check their website and open your eco account to support the first green broker out there. Right? So the Dixie this week, I want to start with the biggest highlight for this week was the FOMC meeting and the Powell speech. Right? So I'm going to share with you a little excerpt of uh, what I share with my community. So pretty much the, the market expectation was to slow down the rate hike. Right. And I think this has already been priced in because, again, they also hinted about this a couple of weeks ago. And you can see we immediately started with that bearish pressure. Right. But Powell once again said that, yes, the interest rates are going to be slowed down. And instead of hiking them by 75 basis points, probably in December, they're going to be hiking them with 50, which immediately goes bearish for the dollar right as expected and uh, yeah pretty much the sentiment went down and we can see already for just uh what what is uh, two days of december we are already starting to continue pushing to the downside okay so that is pretty much the highlight for this week which also i'm very sad about this because it also boosted the equities it boosted the stocks it boosted the indices and i really wanted to uh for power to be more aggressive to actually continue hiking the rate so we can have a dollar explosion stock plummet and uh, so then we can stock up on more but once again i don't think is over it doesn't make much sense to be over so i still think we are, are getting that kind of a monthly pullback i'm currently on the monthly time frame before we eventually continue to push into the highs but of course who am i to say only price is gonna show so in terms of the monthly time frame the only thing that i'm curious is this little candle right there because this is a really nice base candle right you can see right here since we uh created this trend change right there we have been kind of one month push a little slow down push little slow down push right we have the only these base candles we haven't really had like uh, maybe you see here two months of pullback, one clear month of pullback, a couple of months right there of pullback. No, we have just been massively pushing and I definitely do think it's time for us to start correcting. So what is happening right now is pretty good. OK, again, if you try to pick the bottom, you are not going to be successful because, again, you cannot really say where the mark is going to stop. Some of you can come in. OK, 103, 102, 101, 100. Where? We don't know. Right. So, again, keep 
flowing with the market, which is my biggest preach. You know, I always preach flowing with the market and not trying to actually predict it. So currently, again, we're tapping inside this big zone. If you remember, we were really looking at this weekly demand zone. So we rejected from this demand zone one week, we rejected two weeks. But you can see on last week, I already hinted to you that the candle was looking pretty bearish, right? We pushed up, we rejected very nicely, and we formed a nice bearish candle. And this week, it just made sense for the market to pull back, to create a lower high, and then to continue pushing down. So a very nice delivery this week, although on the lower time frames, it was not really textbook, a little bit hard to read. So currently in terms of weekly, uh, there is probably going to be some sort of a supply right there on the daily or on the lower time frame. But we are tapping right now inside this monthly demand, right? We're breaking below this little low right there. We A low that I can potentially want to use as a target is this one as well. So let's see. Dropping onto the daily, you can see a beautiful downtrend. Right, so we pushed down, we pulled back, then we tried to push down, but we failed to make a new low. But then we came in and wicked it, right? We wicked it right there, then we created a little pullback, which created a lower high, right? So this technically, this right there is a structure break to me. It doesn't matter that it just wicked by one pip, right? To me, invalidated, so I counted as a structure break. I draw my range, we went above 50, 50%, we tapped the last lower high supply, and then we dropped. Okay, so the bias this week on the Dixie was bearish and it definitely makes sense why we actually went down at the end of the day. So then dropping onto the foliage with all of that said, so pretty much, yeah, this right there was a little bit tricky to trade right there. So first we big down, then we uh, shift up, then higher low, higher high, higher low. And then you can see how it usually forms, right? So we have a kind of a flat price action, massive buy, and then a massive sell off. Right, so this is definitely a major lower high being created. And then and when this happens, you usually don't, get a nice entry. So what I have been finding out from my backtest and also backtesting together with the community is that actually counter trend trades were great. Why? Well, because when the market makes a lower low, then you have a lot of time and a lot of slowly moving price action to take it towards the lower high. But then when it goes with the direction, it just goes like this. Right? So I have found that myself, I am more profitable on the counter trend trades rather than the trend. So we were joking that the trend is actually not your best best friend because you cannot get in most of the times. So right now, if I just zoom in, well, the last break of structure, it's right there, but we can just take it right here, right? This is our last volume break structure, push, pull back, push again with little pullback, but not a valid range. Then we pull back and we tap inside this little base candle, which we re responded from. And right now it looks like we are about to be making a new lower low. So... At precisely at this moment, exactly after NFP, I don't like analyzing after NFP because you usually you have this, yeah, massive push up, then a nice rejection down. So what I can say is uh, not much, right? Not much. There is this big supply, but this to me is not very relevant because the market can come in higher, high, high, high. I can take 100 longs until the supply gets respected, right? So if you just zoom in, we know that we're also tapping in this very, very, very big demand. But once again, do we want to keep this on? And try to long when the market is going short not really so going back to the flow zooming in very nicely what is the market doing right now it's bearish right if it breaks below here i'm going to be looking for a pullback lower high and a potential continuation down and maybe if it fails to break below but then it pulls back here i'm still going to be looking for a short right so currently again the sentiment um, is bearish on the dollar which means bullish on all the other pairs so let's see how the other pairs are doing but this is how i'm looking at the dixie so make sure to also stick around for tuesday flow with the markets where we're gonna have an update and see how we can strike right so with all that said bearish dollar let's see how the other pairs are looking like euro usd on the monthly time frame pretty much the opposite of the dixie right we're having a massive lower low right they're tapping 0 0.96 which we haven't been here for quite a while right i don't even have data right there in forex.com but this doesn't matter once again so we're or again i'm gonna drop those monthly zones but you're gonna find out that at the end i always delete them because again so the market can stay here for two months before it makes a move so again as i always say i use monthly weekly and daily just for awareness just to be aware where the market is and what we could expect but i always flow with the lower time frames right and this is what i'm going to be teaching you very soon so once again as i said make sure you're subscribed to a notification because i have something great coming for you so monthly candle massive bullishness very nice to see so we kind of you see i was also hinting around a couple of months ago 
we were starting to wick, wick down, wick down. Then we had a little indecision and it was actually this one that we offloaded and we started pushing up. And once again, it's just been two days and we're already making uh, our way to the upside. So once again, this is December. So I don't expect December to do way too much. So I would expect maybe to push up, maybe then respond down a little bit and then chop around. So we are going to have a move in the first two weeks, as I said. So this is our main focus. Dropping onto the weekly time frame. Well, again, you see that EU actually shifted bullish on the weekly from here. So it came in, took this high right there. And right now it's potentially, I, I like to use those highs as potential liquidity points. So, you know, above these highs, there is liquidity. So the market is usually attracted to them. And you can see this week, we had a lovely week, right? So last week we rejected right there, pin bar, but then we push down, we pull back. So this is a very nice bullish indication candle. So if you just understand candles, you don't need to know all of those formations and stuff. You just need to understand the psychology. It opened right there. It pushed down, massively rejected and pushed up, and then it closed like this, right? So what does that tell you? Well, bullish. We made a higher low, we made a higher high, right now pulling back a little bit. And what happened this week? We opened right there, we pushed down to create a higher low, and then we massively pushed up, right? So if I just move this, oh, if I just move this right there, this is pretty much how, uh, yeah, there is our kind of development. So this is a little exercise that I like doing and I make my members do actually to read how the higher time frame candles are going to be looking like on the lower time frame, right? So we can immediately see from the weekly that it's absolutely bullish and this is going to be potentially my next target. Dropping onto the daily, absolutely beautiful bullish market right there. We broke structure here, higher low demand, we tapped inside and go from candle on the daily and we just continued bullish for three days. Forward time frame. For our time frame was a bit tricky. Yeah, it was definitely tricky because we started like Monday a little bit strange. So we massively pushed up, then we massively pushed down and we technically reversed bearish right there, right? So then we had a lower high for shorts, lower low, another lower high for shorts. But here we actually went in, wicked the high, broke down and then we immediately broke up. So here, uh, Wednesday, was this FOM? I don't remember if this was the actual news. I think so not sure but this was a little bit tricky but since then we actually shifted the market to bullish the market has tapped into daily demand and then we offloaded and continued to break to the upside okay so right now we are it's a bit debatable no it's not really debatable we don't have a really a structure break so our valid range is still this it's still this. It failed to tap 50%, but it tapped inside this guy right there. So once again, you're going to see me remove this right now. I don't need this. What I need to see is how the market is flowing right now. So we pushed. We had a very nice short pullback right there. And you can see the rejection immediately. My community actually took a couple of longs right there early in the morning. So one long right there, two long right there, then bearish. But then it didn't provide for a short. And then we didn't trade right there. So Friday was also profitable for us. I didn't trade though. And then we had NFP, massive drop to the downside, and you can see the immediate rejection. So once again, I wouldn't really analyze and try to trade with this kind of price action right now. So what I'm immediately going to say is that I am bullish on your USD. I am awaiting for this structure break potentially. And from there, I'm going to be um, evolving and adapting, right? So if we have a break above that, I'm going to be looking for pullback higher low, then to take a long trade. Uh, I don't see something else happening right now. The other thing I see is maybe if it really fails to break, which I don't think it's going to happen because we came like three pips to the high. So I just think we're going to break. But if we don't break by any chance, maybe the market opens with a gap down there and starts to pull back. Then from here, I'm still going to be interested to, to look for longs, right? So once again, Dixie is short. Euro should be longs. Right, just thinking logically. So this is my main focus. But once again, I tend to change my bias five times a day. I can take a short in the long market and the other way around. Right, it's all about the flow. So this is how I'm gonna close this analysis. It's very simple, and once again, it's fresh price action after NFP. So I don't want to comment on it much. I want to show you very quickly my two trades for this week. So the first trade I took was on Wednesday. Yep, right there. It was a rather Kind of, yeah, I don't want to say unlucky trade, but I could have managed it a bit better, right? Then I tried to take a long from here, but unfortunately, the stop loss was like above 10 pips, and I don't do this, so I missed on this on this long right there. Uh, but this is the trade I took. So again, the market was short. This is a forward lower low. This is a potential forward lower high, tapping into supply on the left, creating all my rules that I need to see. It came back, responded, then took the liquidity of the response. 
and pretty much that is where I entered. So there is your liquidity gap right there. There is your shift of structure right there for me. So for some of you it could be here, but I have specific rules that allow me to trade from this one. Pulls back. I took the trade from there. Uh, very good stop loss. And then you can see, so probably my mistake, something that I learned this week is I don't want to go break even because I don't want to micromanage my trade. But if I really have like one push retest, two push retest, three push retest, then yeah, potentially you can look to secure, right? But many times what I happen is break even and then flush. So on this precise trade, I had confidence and I didn't go break even. So this one was a stop loss and it went to around three and a half hours. So I couldn't even take a partial. So quite an unlucky trade, but it was a great, great, great setup that I was really happy to, to take. And I was also really happy to take a loss, even though I could have definitely went break even. So this is my first trade. Uh, here, not, it was very tough to trade. Monday was tough to trade. Tuesday was also really tough to trade right there. I think there were a couple of setups, but not really. There was a beautiful short right there on Tuesday. I'm not sure if some of the community took it. Uh, but yeah, this is Wednesday. And if I just show you quickly on um, Thursday, Thursday was pretty, pretty, pretty nice. I again did a little mis Yeah, it's not really a mistake. I just left like 10% to float, but I could have taken it all. So once again, uh, this is a... Uh, so are we were actually bearish on the Fowley? No, we were not bearish, but we were responding from an extreme supply. And what I was expecting, what I told my team in the morning is that we're tapping inside supply and what usually happens, but the market is bullish, remember? So for us, the market has shifted bullish from here. So what I said is that usually the market is going to go to supply to give you the reaction to make a higher low and then to potentially push up okay so i took the supply and i potentially expected for the market to give me a pullback which it did but i took a little bit of a risk because this gave us the pullback and this was the retest so the risk was is the market gonna continue to push for one more leg right but luckily at least i got a reaction to take my profit and then this pullback was pretty much the reaction from this supply and then we went on breaking it so again this was my thought process on this trade there was a trade right there uh but we we take those trades live with the community by the way and we have specific rules so you could have taken quite a few losses right there if you do not understand right the the market and if you do not have a strict strategy so we did not trade from here we traded once the time was right so once the time was right, we got our trend change, we got our retest, pretty good stop loss, 4.2, pretty much the same as the previous one. And uh, yeah, this was my profit on this one, 5.7R, which was beautiful. So this is my week, two trades, one loss, one great win. I'm very, very, very happy to start the, the month like this. And uh, yeah, so that is, those are, this is my performance for this week. Once again, very happy and I'm looking forward to the next couple of weeks, which pretty much two weeks I'm going to be trading to see if we can finish December really, really strong. Next, we're going to have a look at Euro EM on the monthly time frame. So pretty much, yeah, we've been having a look at this quite a lot. A very nice push, a very nice pullback, tapping 50% on the monthly time frame. We don't have like a really clean um, demand zone to look at. Yeah, you can potentially take something like this. It's probably a quarterly zone. But again, I don't draw zones on those on, on those time frames. So monthly time frame, it's bullish. Push and pullback also on the weekly. So also the weekly pullback is bullish for me, right? We potentially expected it to react from here and it reacted, but right now it's failing to hold and it's break. It breaks and this one is not really valid. So I would say that there is something within this candle that can potentially be a valid demand zone. So this week, a very nice short right there, which again, does it make sense? Massive long on EU, massive short on EJ. Why? Well, because of USD yen probably so making our way onto the daily time frame again we see that this low right there has been violated so there is really not no other clean demand zone for me on the daily like this formation right there is is very tricky like we have this massive v shape right which doesn't really give us a clean zone so with this one broken right now i'm starting to think okay is it actually gonna hold from this zone or is it maybe coming somewhere down there again we don't know what is the daily doing right now well if you remember, I was doubting what is happening right there. And I still thought that this is going to be my major high low. Well, this high low is violated. What does that tell me? Well, that the daily has been, it has shifted bearish. But as you can see, the daily has been bearish for quite a while. Right? So this is how you actually flow with the market. And this is why you don't look at weekly, daily, monthly, hourly, and all the time frames. Because again, monthly tells you bullish, weekly tells you bullish, daily tells you bearish, hourly tells you bearish, and then the other one tells you something else. And that is where we get confused, okay? 
supply zone on the daily we can take it but again if you drop to the forward time frame you can see you look at the flow so we had this very massive drop then we uh created the bullish shift right there but this was pretty much a daily push and this is your daily pullback look at the correctiveness of the corrective nature of price right I like this so again you see we have a very nice push we have very corrective pullback and right now we have another push to the downside and this is once again probably price action but i look at the daily leg in this way so and again you can see from here we shifted bearish and we've been bearish all the time lower low lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high just beautiful oh this one actually got really nice so let me know guys did you take any euro gen shorts because it just looks fabulous look look at the momentum to the downside right now this is my last break this is my last fall break and then pretty much uh b -b this one is tricky which is, which is the one what i'm doubting i just take this right when you find it hard to take the zone just take the whole range which is this right the market came in and responded but then i'm gonna ask the next question are we pulling back to 50 percent yes so this one is already cooking for a short the question is is this is has this grabbed enough liquidity in order to push down or are we going to come in again, then make the shift and then continue down? So what I'm going to say on the Euro Yen is that I'm bearish, actually. We tapped inside and you can see uh, we pushed up and then we actually shifted the structure down on the 15, but I'm not going to rush for it, right? So what I'm going to potentially forecast, what I would actually love to see is another tap inside the supply and then to be given the short, right? But of course, if the market continues right now and pushes down, then I'm going to be looking for a new lower high and continuing short still. So even though EURUSD is absolutely bullish, it makes no sense for me to say that this is bullish because it's not. It's absolutely bearish right now. So again, if you're trading EURUM, the bias is short. You decide which scenario to choose. And of course, make sure to follow your own plan, flow with the markets and don't marry any outcome. So that's EURUM. Let's jump on the Aussies. All right, let's explore the Aussies. So monthly time frame i would say that here we had a break of structure up and here we have a reversal down so it happened right there then we threw a little bit of a liquidity gap right there which is tricky but then once again at the end we still shifted bearish and yes this market is tapping right now into a pretty major zone right there but again do you want to draw a zone like this well not really and yeah you can take it like this you can also take the wick it doesn't really matter but it's responding from this overall region right this is why i wanted to draw it because right now we're responding from there but does that mean we turn bullish well not really to me the monthly time frame is still bearish and it's a little bit hard to say where is the invalidation point right is it gonna be this one is it this one or this one this is why again i don't look too much on monthly because i don't have rules for the monthly which makes it again a little bit subjective i can take this monthly supply for now which we're just about to tap and then potentially transfer to the weekly to see how it looks like and it looks pretty good right so this is pretty much that big buy and then a very big sell-off on NZUSD, usd i remember we were already tapping inside so we're maybe breaking it we're gonna see in a bit but on aussie we're just tapping it okay so similar development to eu we had a rejection we had a very nice bullish uh, sentiment candle last week and this week we just pull back and we continue pushing up but i can see that the the strength the momentum, especially on this weekly candle, is not very strong, right? We pushed down, we tried to push up, but then you can see because the body is overall, it's it's a bullish body, but it's an indecision. So if you just look at the candle, it's not like a strong candle to really indicate a massive rejection and a massive pump. Like, you can see this one is a bit more bullish to me. It has a longer wick and it has like the body, the, the body close is very close to the wick high. This one looks a little bit more like a doji. But again, that does not mean we are not going to continue pushing up. So let's see what the Fowley tells us. Aussie dollar, by the way, I have a couple of traders uh, from my community on the Aussie. The Aussie has been also tricky, right? So from here, we shifted down, lower high, lower low, higher high. So we here we reverse bullish. We pull back higher low formation, tried to push up, failed, came back to grab liquidity, then massive expansion, consolidated, NFP pullback. Right now, it just looks like it wants to go up right this is my hourly demand zone this is my hourly range which you already have 50 percent tap right right now we're responding so again my main question goes is this tap enough to continue make a new hard high or are we going to pull back again take out this low and then give us the shift and then continue going higher okay so that is this is pretty much my outlook if we break higher then i'm going to be looking for a new higher low and then a potential continuation to the upside 
So that's the Aussie. Very, very, very simple. I actually like this price action. It's very simple, very straightforward, and we can already look for something on uh, on Monday. But once again, this one is not good because in order for you to turn bullish, this one has to break on the 50 minute. And right now we're responding from it and chopping around. So again, you can have this for a long if you feel risky to trade very close to the high high and above 50%. But I would love this setup. Give Monday a short, very nice short on Monday, Tuesday accumulation, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday push up. So that would be the perfect tweet. But again, the market is not perfect. So let's not marry an outcome and stay tuned for Tuesday where we're going to have an update, see what Monday did and how we can adapt. Again, bullish overall Aussie dollar, massively bearish USDN, right? Interesting. Monthly time frame, you can see this one has been very choppy on the monthly for quite a few months. And right now it starts to show us a little bit of bearishness, which is good. But nothing I can extract too much from all that mess. Because then I'm dropping onto the weekly time frame. And if we are absolutely textbook and honest, this to me is the higher low. Right, but what I can see right now is that the market tapped inside this higher low. It tried to push, it failed, and right now it's coming big steam towards the downside. So I feel like this low can potentially break, which can turn into a very good target if you're short on Aussie JPY. On the daily time frame, we are probably bearish, but I'm even not going to spend the time to try to analyze right there. Just once again, look at the, the overall candles, massive push, pull back, lower high, lower low, lower high, chop around, lower low, lower high, lower low. So it's just down, right? We pull back towards this. Very nice. Right now we have a brand new one. Very nice. Lower low of the daily. Um, yeah, it's potentially going to tap inside this, but I think this one already gave the reaction and right now it's just dropping. So again, don't look too much on the left. Focus on what is happening right now. Dropping onto the 4H. So again, we know that this could be a daily time frame zone. So again, if you have mastery over time frames, let's say the market makes a 4 hourly lower low and then shifts the 4 hourly bullish, then this could happen. Right, and then we continue with oops, with the overall daily, right? So what is happening right there is that we have a daily push, we have a daily uh, uh, daily correction, and then a daily continuation. But in the meantime, you can take a couple of longs right there on the hourly, just flowing with the markets. Okay, so that is the relationship between daily and hourly, because right now on the hourly time frame, the market is about to break structure right there, and if it does, then this one is going to turn into our major lower high supply. So then I'm going to be looking for a trade like this. Okay, so hopefully this breaks because if it doesn't, uh, then yeah, then this one is a nice supply that already got tapped. Then we can even look at this right there for potential short. But I really do think this one could happen. If it doesn't, then yeah, you can look for another pullback inside this zone, maybe even this zone because we're still short bias, right? If the market doesn't break this low, then a break of this high will not make it bullish because this is not a major lower high right now. Why? Because it hasn't broken structure. Okay, so pretty much, yeah, then if the market starts bullish, then I will be looking to short from somewhere. And how do we know where the short is going to occur? We watch the lower time frame for the shift. Okay, so that is the Aussie JPY. Again, Aussie dollar is absolutely bullish. This one is bearish. We saw the same pattern with uh, the euros. We're going to have a look at the NZDs right now. But again, flow with the market, flow with the most recent trend, which is currently bearish. The NZDs, well, pretty much the similar as the Aussies. Sometimes this one is a little bit weaker, sometimes as right now, it's a little bit stronger. I don't know what is the exact correlation between those two pairs, but let's see. Very nice three. Well, now this one is just open. So very nice two uh, monthly bullish candles. And right now we're opening as well very strongly. And as you can see, this is probably where we have that last last kind of uh, resort right there. I think it's going to be on the weekly time frame. And the next major monthly zone to me is going to be this one. We have a little bit here, but this one has already been retested by this one. So if this to me fails, if this fails, then we can potentially open up space for this one to tap and then maybe to give us the flush. Okay, so this is very long term, but it's just how I feel about it. Dropping onto the weekly time frame, look at that. Massive sell off, massive buy off. So that that's strange. We're tapping into the last resort, as I said, and it doesn't look like it wants to hold. Look here, the NZD has been the most bullish uh, currency of all. Massive, 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 massive. It just keeps going up and up and up. And even this week, it created a pullback and just massive expansion. Like again, let's compare the candle of the Aussie. Look at that indecision and look at the candle right there. This is telling me bullishness. And this just tells me, oh, I want to break above. So if you break above, then of course we have to 
adapt to a couple of things. But then again, you're short on the weekly, sure, but look at the daily. The daily shifted right there, and the daily has been making higher lows and higher highs all the time. Even right now. We pushed, we pulled back, higher low formation, massive expansion. Four days since Tuesday, uh, again, this is a textbook week. Monday gives you the pullback. Four days of expansion, right? Tuesday kind of threw a wick again, as I said, the accumulation, and then we just explode, right? So hopefully some of you got along because it was just textbook. Even on the Fowley time frame, you see the push, you see the pullback, the Fowley aligned right there. What is your Fowley zone? It's this one. We got a tap right there. Reaction fails to break. What happens when it fails to break? It comes back to grab liquidity. There it is. And then we offload it. So amazing, amazing, amazing delivery. Right now, if you really zoom in, you're going to spot that there was a Fowley break of structure right there. But then it went on and break of structure down. But right now it went, it goes up and breaks structure up. So again, as you can see, this one is much stronger and it's already making a new higher high. So what we have to do right now is try to find a good looking demand right there. So we can do this on the hourly maybe. And yeah, pretty much this is the demand formed by this massive sell from NFP. And right now we're breaking above. So once again, I really wouldn't look to trade this one as much right now. So what I would look to see is maybe give me one more candle push up, then start pulling back. Then I'm going to drop my 15 minute range, uh, sorry, quality range, look for 50% and then I'm going to start longing it. Okay, so give it some time, hopefully. But again, NZUSD is absolutely bullish, absolutely bullish. And it's already making a new uh, hard high. So again, this is our major low. The major high hasn't formed yet. So again, I am absolutely bullish on this one. No question about it. But again, let's see. It's tapping into the last, last, last resort right now. So do we gonna get a short? We're gonna see. Curious to see NJ. So we can see this one. It's, uh, it's not really that weak as we've seen on the other ones. Again, going to the let's do one month first. Monthly time frame, massive expansion. Uh, you can see the candle is overall bullish. It pulled back very nicely and then it pushed all the way up, right? Again, we still have that wick to the upside. And right now we start a little bit bearish, but we can see that the NZD is just so bullish that it it doesn't matter how uh, weak this one is, right? This one does not go down. So again, the, the thing about N NJ is that the weekly time frame is bearish. So if you remember, we shifted to bearish right there. We pulled back, reacted, came in again, and right now we're reacting again bearishly. So there are a lot of signals for a short right you can see the daily time frame shifted there but it came up and tagged it out so the daily time frame is bullish right now and our major higher low is this on the daily so again you can see what's starting to happen we're starting to chop around weekly supply daily is bullish and the folly is gonna tell you something else as well so what is happening right there what is happening oh well it's uh chopping around a macro chop like look at the chop here push up yeah it provides some sort of macro moves but then it breaks down then it breaks up so what is this it's just liquidity grabbing and consolidating so if i really zoom in break down break up so a massive long from here so hopefully some of it took this long because that is insane very nice push you can see it actually wicked above this high right there and uh, then if it wicked this high then potentially you can say that even this is your shift of structure then this is your supply and this is not valid so there is my uh, structure on nj this is my high this is my low we're already pulling back about 50 percent we took this high as liquidity so it's probably already preparing for a short the question is are we going to short from here or are we going to pull back a little bit higher and then get a short from there so i'm surprised to see i, I didn't think that the N nj will be uh, bearish but it's also bearish like all the jpy pairs so again this is my setup i'm bearish bias right now on the uh, nj and all the other jpy pairs right now let's go to uj to actually see why all of those jpy pairs are bearish and here is USDJPY massive monthly evening star formation. Although I don't look at for kind of formations like this, this one is just so beautiful, right? Very nice indecision on the top, massive engulfing candle that engulfed the last two months. This is huge. And you can see already two days into the month and the market is down 400 pips on the new uh, monthly open. So very, very, very big volume to the downside. We're still about to tap inside this monthly demand zone which is also the last kind of weekly major structure as well. So this is the last pullback before the big push. So of course we can 
refine this one a little bit to, to here and yeah so a very huge uh position right now for uj look at the weekly candle this week massive bearishness i love it very nice massive bearishness right now we gotta give it some time to see what's gonna happen so again there is a confusion monthly is bullish weekly is bullish daily is probably gonna be bearish right we align daily bearish lower high lower low right now so daily is definitely bearish um a bit hard to find the lower high this is why i'm gonna take this one so this is our daily lower high and then dropping onto the 4h the 4h is the same uh it's gonna be the same if this one doesn't break structure lower because if the forward goes on and breaks structure down right there then this is gonna be a valid range and then we can look for something like this if not then on monday i'm gonna be looking for like for a pullback which is gonna give that pullback on the other JPY pairs, and then they can flush together. So this does not mean to go that much. It can just go 50%, right? But just I'm going to be looking if... So there are the two scenarios. First scenario, break below structure, pullback, lower high, and a short. Second scenario is to start bullish, to give us a nice pullback on Monday, maybe Tuesday, and then a drop during the rest of the week. So that's UJ. Very, very, very simple. And again, let's keep in mind that we're tapping into a major demand zone on the left, uh, which is the last resort for the weekly and the monthly to hold. Well, monthly, not really, because the monthly... Yeah, the monthly, I don't know. The monthly looks not like down there, because you can see it's so... It's, so, it's not valid structure to me on the monthly, so I'm not really going to pay attention to it. But if this breaks right there on the weekly, then the weekly is going to turn bearish. And that is going to be big. So let's see. That is my outlook on UJ. I am short bias right now. Hopefully we get that pullback. So all the JPYs can give us a little pullback and then we can short them all. When I just opened the chart on new cat, I see a very big consolidation, right? I see a very big and nice monthly overall range. But again, if you really, really, really zoom in and try to figure out, okay, what is happening? So this was a higher low, right? We broke it down right there, which this makes this one a lower high. Then we broke massively down. I don't see any valid ranges right there. So this to me is the last one. So here we actually shifted bullish on the monthly. What caused the shift? Well, again, it's a little bit hard to, to find it out right there. But I guess the last demand is here. And this pretty much turns into my monthly range. Uh, but this is not very correct because probably... Yeah, probably the, the major low is this one right there or this one. It's not this one. Definitely not this one, right? But I don't want to drop a zone like this. So the monthly is going to be bullish as long as we remain above this guy right there. So again, monthly is bullish. Dropping onto the weekly, weekly is also bullish according to me, right? This is where we started. Massive push, very nice pullback. So we're pulling back towards, yeah, this one is not really valid. So this one is my weekly range, right? We're tapping 50% right now. We gave a little reaction, but the market hasn't tapped anything on the left in order to continue making new hard highs probably right so i guess we are gonna have another drop inside the zone and then maybe if something happens if the news occur then we're gonna go and see what's gonna happen by the way i think i checked the economic calendar this week and we have yes so we have bank of canada interest rate decision uh it doesn't give me the previous 375 this is the previous yeah so we don't yet see the consensus but again stay tuned because we have interest rate and rate statement for cat so that could be huge so stay tuned for that going on to the daily time frame daily is a bit tricky because on the daily we kind of look like we shifted bullish but again weekly is not in a good place so yeah because here we actually shifted bullish then which means that this is our daily higher low we tapped inside we're reacting and this one gives a lot of confusion on the hard time frames therefore we drop on the 4h what is happening on the 4H? Well, we shifted bearish. So you can see it's, it's literally everywhere. This is why you need a systematic strategy to, to be uh, kind of browsing through your timeframes. Because right now, I am bearish on the 4H, but I'm bullish on the daily. So which one are, are we going to listen to? Right? 4 time timeframe to me, shifted down right there. This is a really good supply. So even if I just, if I listen to my plan, I'm ignoring the daily. And this is how I'm looking at structure right now. Potentially from a macro perspective, expecting for it to, to go down once again. Okay. Very nice push. Very corrective pullback. We tapped inside. We reacted. But again, is this going to be the reaction that gives us the drop? Not really because this is NFP price action. Right. So it could happen. It could happen to push down. Then I'm going to be looking for, for the retest and a, and a comeback. But what I would love to see is Monday push up. Then give them in the short. And then we can go down. 
The second thing is we push down, pull back lower high, and then continue going down as well. So for now, I'm going to say I'm bearish on UCAT. Let me know what you guys think. There are a lot of great UCAT traders uh, in the comments, so let me know. And uh, yeah, this is my view on UCAT. Let's see how it plays. I'm short bias on it right now. Let's look at the GBPs. So GU has been really tricky. Once again, reaching all-time lows. Uh, probably, I think it was a good investment opportunity. I mean, you can just buy down there with an open stop loss or just... I don't know how you invest in currencies. Like, it's more it's like more like a position trading. But I do think hitting the all-time lows could be a really good long on the pound. And we can already see, like, it's been three months of bullishness. Right? So, are we pulling back? Are we reversing? This is a little bit hard to, to figure out. Which is why I also don't look too much on the monthly time frame as a day trader. Because again, right now, if you trade the monthly, you're going to say, okay, we have a push. So right now, I have to wait six months for the market to create a pullback before I get into another short. Right? But of course, if this is how you want to trade, you go for it. Nothing too much to extract apart from that. Uh, going on to the weekly time frame, I consider this one to be my valid range on the weekly. And right now, it's broken above. Which means to me that the weekly is turning bullish. What turned the weekly bullish? It's this demand zone. Right, so we have been pushing up for four weeks in a row. So can we expect a pullback? Well, definitely, but do we know when it's gonna start? Not at all. Okay, so monthly is bearish, weekly is bullish, daily is bullish. Right, so daily definitely push higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. There is the last break of structure on the daily. There is the last demand zone which we can look at. But once again, quality time frame, main time frame for us. Um. Yeah, well, similar to all the other pairs, if this one goes on and breaks structure above, then I look for a pullback higher low and I buy. Simple. If this one, by any means, gaps down and opens right there or just doesn't break this high, then I'm going to be looking for this low to be taken and then potential alignment for long, right? Usually this is going to happen to take out the low and especially knowing GU, if this one doesn't break above, it's definitely going to attack this one and then reverse, right? Because some pairs are not going to do that. Some pairs are going to pull back to this and then push, but probably not GU. So to keep it absolutely simple, those are my two scenarios on GU. I am bullish on both of them, but it just depends on how it opens. And again, this is NFP price action, so we don't want to look at it too much because we, yeah, it's nothing much to be extracted. So wait for Monday to open, wait to see which one of those scenarios is going to play out, and then we adapt and stay tuned for Tuesday. GJ is absolutely beautifully bearish right now. So hopefully you GJ traders are killing it. Hard high on the monthly. Right now it's pulling back potentially towards a hard low, which is good. Weekly time frame, very nice weekly uh, engulfing candle bearish, but still keep in mind that we are also bullish on the weekly, right? And we're potentially traveling towards some sort of a demand. We're traveling somewhere like we took this one, for example, but this one came in, responded, and it doesn't look like it wants to hold. So pretty much this could be a great target right now, this low, because this low failed to push up and also this low failed to take out the daily lower high. So technically we're absolutely bearish on the daily as well. So all I'm seeing on GJ is bearishness right now. Look at the quality time frame, look at all the beautiful lower highs and lower lows. This one as well, lower low, lower high. And right now the setup is absolutely textbook and absolutely simple. There is our push, fall lower low. The market is already pulling back, about to be creating a, a lower high. Okay. So again, two things. The market can just go from here. So you have to find your setup on the lower time frames right there, driving it to the lower low. Or it can come back, grab some liquidity, right? Then give you the alignment and then still push down. And at the end, I am potentially even going to be, if I took a massive trade on this one, there could be some runners we can leave towards uh, this major low right there. So... This is my GJ. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen. You can see the 15 minute is already turning bearish, but I would just love to see this one taken and then potentially to get a short into this zone. But if it doesn't happen, then keep following the 15 minute bearish because it can just go down. We don't know. So again, GU bullish, GJ bearish. This is what we've been having with all the USD and JPY pairs. So I guess that's normal. So let's see what we can do about it. Let's have a look at gold. So we're having a very nice monthly bullish engulfing candle, but that doesn't mean much, right? That doesn't mean we're really going to skyrocket and go to the upside. 
For now, it makes sense to do so, because if the dollar goes down, of course, gold goes up. And I had a comment that they're not really entirely related, right? So think of gold as a, as a commodity that always has a value, but how we trade it is usually against the dollar, right? So I still think that the relationship is very important, because you, again, cannot just buy gold and expect for it to rise in prices always, right? Sometimes you can buy gold and it can go down, right? So with this said, Currently, weekly time frame is once again tapping into a, a very major. So to me, this is the major weekly lower high. If this one breaks, then according to me, the weekly is going to become bullish. But I've seen on commodities and on indices as well, they tend to do this. They tend to take out a major high, maybe tap into something above and then flush. OK, so I'm not really excluding this. And maybe if this one breaks, I'm not really going to try to, to long it too hard. Because look at the overall development right there. We tapped in, we responded for two weeks, and right now massive engulfing candles. So it doesn't make sense for me right now to just reverse. It's probably going to attack this high because this high right there failed to reverse the market. Dropping onto the daily, we had a nice pullback. So we didn't have like a deep pullback. I have this zone, I had this zone as well. So we didn't really have it. I think this structure is no longer relevant. We tapped inside, we pull back, and right now what we have is a new daily hard high. We have a new daily hard low right there. And uh, yeah, so right now the question is, are we taking out this high? And what happens after we take out this high? Right, because here we responded and massive push. I don't think we're going to reverse. And we're only going to reverse for me if we break below the structure. That is only when I'm going to be looking for shorts, right? Or maybe if the probability goes down. Right now the probability, the range on the probability is from here to here. We have a little base rider that the market is responding from so once again this is the setup on gold our is trade gonna push from here and then continue following the longs is the market gonna pull back lower to here maybe to here to grab some liquidity and then to look for the longs right well only the price and only the market is gonna show us and time so let's wait for it but what i'm gonna say is that i'm overall bullish on gold right now it doesn't make sense to go bearish i do think we're taking out this weekly high and then i'm gonna be interested to see how we're gonna respond from the upper one so again bullish and gold let's see what happens let me know what you guys think in the comments looking forward to read your outlooks on gold all right let's have a look at indices honestly i'm a bit disappointed because i wanted to drop but we had a very nice explosion this month so a very nice bullish candle following the very nice bullish candle from october as well october november very nice bullish right now it's december that is going to decide what is going to happen so if you just look at it uh in terms of monthly time frame, it looks like it's over, right? Look at all of that correction right there that took, uh, well, it took us more than more than half a year, right? Is this valid? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So from here, come on, how do you do this? Yeah, I think it's half a year, yeah, 273 days to pull back, and right now we're starting to push, and it took it like uh, two months to engulf, like, how many months right there? So it's definitely a lot of uh, bullishness coming in right now, which makes me wonder, right, is the bearish market over? Right, so that might be a question. Again, I'm experiencing uh, one of the first kind of markets like this as I'm more experienced right now. Although I have been investing for quite a while, like since right there. But again, right now I'm getting into the grips of it. So yes, as I told you, similar to what I said on the GOAT, sometimes those indices, they tend to grab a high and then reverse. So here we had it. Grab the high reverse. Right now, we are grabbing a high and we're tapping into an upper zone right now. So I'm very curious what is going to happen from this zone, right? Dropping onto the daily time frame this week, we just had a push. We just had a pullback, higher low formation, and the market actually went up, which is a very nice, very textbook. Right now, we have a new break of structure on the daily as well. So let me just, yeah, I'm not going to draw it. This one is no longer relevant. There is our daily higher low formation. The market taps inside and the forward time frame is also bullish. Look at the expansion right there. When uh, the Fed's chair announced the, the slowdown of the rate hikes. And right now we have pulled back below 50%. We're tapping into demand and the market is already rejecting. And it's also aligning internal structure on the 4H. So US 30%, it looks absolutely bullish. So if I'm trading this one in the upcoming week, then I'm going to probably try to long it right yes we're tapping into supply but as long as the flower is bullish i keep the longs okay so that is us 30 and the overall setup that i'm going to be looking at is either a deeper tap inside this zone right or yeah just a little pullback higher low and then a continuation higher 
I will be looking for this one to potentially break and then we're going to see if it's going to hold from this zone or if it's going to go higher. So what is interesting is that although we had like a very nice response right here as well, it looks like it came in to grab another liquidity. So the daily aligned bearish, but look at the look at the correction, right? So this is a textbook kind of flag. Is it the flag pattern? Like push, push, right? So took it out which makes that this right now is the major daily higher low, which has to break in order to shift bearish. Monthly time frame, bullish, bullish, very nice. It still looks like a pullback. And look at NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is looking really good. This one still looks like a pullback, which could be about to be over. It's below 50%. It's really nice. I do think it's a pretty, pretty nice pullback. Just if you zoom out, we haven't had such a nice pullback. Like here we had 2018, 23% pullback. COVID, 32. But right now... We have, yeah, again, 37, 38% pullback. So can it be over? Well, we never know. You cannot time the market, which is what I learned. So I've been trying to time the market, expect those drops to buy stocks. So I spent like last month, I didn't buy a single stock waiting. And right now, it will go up and I'm not involved. So here as well, very similar to S30, a very nice push that caused the break of structure, which makes our major higher low right there, which we're currently pulling back to. Right. So again, we are bullish on this one. I will be potentially looking for it to, to break again and to come deep into that zone. And let's not forecast way too long. Right. 2023 can continue to expand the bearish market. We don't know what's going to happen. But for now, I am bullish. Right. Short term, we're just bullish. So we buy the indices as they go deep into the greed state. S&P as well. Very lovely daily high low. It just pushed high, high, high low. Boom, new hard high. We're coming in very deep right now, so I can just even look to minimize the zone because we're tapping into the absolute, absolute extreme. And it can do this trick to take out a major high, right? To tap into a bigger zone and then to drop, right? And again, if I just zoom out on S&P, this one, tap 35, I was expecting 31 as well. So right, 31 right now could be even 32 because I look at mean values as well. Uh, it also kissed 50%, which perfectly resembled uh, the uh, 35 zone right so again the question is are we going to make another drop lower well we don't know daily time frame is bullish right now so we again have a new higher low formation right there the market is pulling back volatile time frame is also bullish so i would expect another push and i can even call a break of this one i can call a break of 4160 and there something could happen that is going to cause the market to maybe collapse look at all that imbalance right there usually the market is going to spend a lot of time before it uh, reverses or it's going to take out the high as major liquidity okay so i would expect more upside on this one going on to fear and greed uh we are at 63 right now so still extreme greed uh no, sorry greed we, we are yet to get into extreme greed which will be good this is why i do think we have more space to the upside to take out the high on us 30 on nasdaq and on s p top here and around right there we're gonna get into a good extreme greed state right you can see here we're above the ma for quite a while right now we're just kind of going above it but you can see we've been above it for a couple of times before we go below it right this one as well stock price in uh, strength it's also very nice it's sitting right now at extreme greed which is good right but again it can go on for a little while so let's see how it goes once again as I explained on the dxy we had the market expectation of uh mr Powell to slow down the rates and yes they're going to slow down their monetary um tightening which was also very kind of uh the, the sentiment really nicely combined together because we also had an increased non-farm employment right uh 263 compared to the to the expected 2k no sorry this is last uh, uh then the two arise forecast right so that is a very positive than expected which once again kind of gives us that a little bit of a uh, combination right so uh it's very negative for the dollar that this one happens but it's also very positive for the dollar that this one happens so we're kind of a little bit mm, stuck in the middle uh, no interest rates soon so we can expect the interest rate to be hiked in uh in december the euro is still lagging behind so we can expect another uh, another one from those but again i do think december is going to be overall quiet so let's see how it's going to go but still i am looking for more upside on the indices as of right now bitcoin and the cryptos didn't get the love 
that stocks are gaining right now so we're having like a little bit you see we have a nice push right now but yeah it's still it's still looking terrible it's still looking like a, it's falling from the sky and if you just jump on the weekly massive low potentially pulling back for a lower high and i still think we, we have more downside and right now again yeah we're tapping probably the let me actually check it out crypto fear and greed index i think we also had yeah if i just jump in right there you can see that we are at fear. Last week we were extreme fear, so there is still more space to go much down. All right, so there is definitely a lot of space, and I think around 14, 12, 10k, this is gonna be where uh, a lot of people are starting that are gonna start buying, and then from there we're, we can actually see another bull run. So it's gonna take time. Don't rush, but if you like crypto as an investment, then dollar cost average, like buy from here, buy from here right now, as it makes lower lows, buy again, right? This is a strategy for stocks, right? And I do think crypto is a good time to be buying right now, if you believe in the long term for it, okay? Ethereum as well, I do think Ethereum has a lot of a downside, it still hasn't even taken out the low right there, so even for me, if Ethereum takes out this low, I'm gonna buy, because I like Ethereum, uh, but let's see, I'm not gonna be here throwing any forecast because I lost lots of money in crypto and I'm not loving it but again this is a lesson that we have to learn in order to trade safer invest safer as well in the right storages and all that stuff so this is crypto and this is how I want to wrap up this video right so it's been a nice monthly outlook we have very interesting price action right now across all the currency pairs on the monthly as well we're gonna have a potential alignments and but also intraday is very interesting once again, we have a couple of weeks right now, two, maximum three to trade. So let's make sure to finish December strong and then spend some time on planning for the year ahead. I wish an amazing weekend if you're watching this in the weekend and I wish you a crushing week ahead of you. So let's make the most of it and talk to you on Tuesday.